I was just editing a video and I pulled my headphones off and I could hear rain. So we're gonna head out of here right away just in case that rain makes the that driveway a, a horrible mess and we can't get through it. So we're gonna bounce out of here right now. When it comes to lighting out here in the snow, the overhead white is the best. The ambers don't do so great in the snow. They do awesome in the fog and the rain, but out here in the snow is where the white shines. Makes me wanna put two white ones down below where I have my amber ones as well, so I have dual options because that the two ambers on the bottom really, really help um, so you can see the depth of like of potholes and stuff or how deep puddles are when you're driving out here uh, in the dark. Anyway guys, fingers crossed. I'm a little nervous about this. I really am. <laughs> It's raining hard. I was editing with my headphones on for about two and a half hours, so it wasn't raining before I started to edit, so this may have been happening for hours. Oh no. Without chains, you would be screwed out here. Uh, see this, the entrance to the park part is no problem. It's a little bumpy, but it's fine. are good see in rainy situations is where the amber light just shines uh, it's so much better than the white these are things that I just recently learned because for you know since I got my light bar I was only running the white light and the amber is way better when it's wet and foggy I love it Got the chains down here with the uh, with the heater on them just to make sure that they're all dry before we put them away. Um, these ones are brand new. The last thing I want is for them to rust <laughs> after the first couple of uses. So we're just trying to dry them out here. Hey, this guy's one of my subscribers. <laughs> oh man, I'm so tired. Of no haircuts, no shower. Oh. Hey everybody, my little, my little mirror. We're gonna pull out the jackery for this one. It's just easier than having to run and grab an extension cord, which is not inside the van because I don't use them very often. My jackeries are always in here. We're gonna cut my hair inside the van because it's gross out there which means hair 
<laughs> Everywhere. Oh man, it's getting long up there. All right. This razor's not doing very well. Well, this thing's not working very good. Crap. So the key to cutting your hair where you can't see it is to run this over that section like 10 different times at 10 different angles just in case you missed a patch. <laughs> I've been cutting my own hair now for, I don't know, 15 years, maybe more. And I've given myself hundreds of bad haircuts. And I don't care. Okay. Now you go shorter and just drag it over this area here. And as you can tell, I'm focusing on what I can see in the front and not care what's in the back. I don't even care. You're behind me. Bye. <laughs> Pop a clip on there. And now on the top, I just keep combing it until it's down to the height that I want. So I go tall at the top and then just knit. So I go this way at the top, and then as I get to the back where I want it shorter, I just start tipping it flat. Keeping it longer in the front, shorter in the back. By, and then I take it this way, by dragging it flat against my head, it gets me that fade kind of. Well, that's just how I figured out to do it anyway. And any screw-ups that you do cutting your own hair, they'll be gone in a couple days when your hair starts growing back. It's all good. Now let's look at my hair mess. Look at it. It's all over me. <laughs> what a freaking mess. I'm slowly get outside. Get most of this hair out of the van. Holy crap, dude. Grab that magic Rayobi blower. All right, the haircut moment of truth. A little bit of water. little baby dab of gel let's do this baby Woo! oh yeah not bad not bad so as a nomad living on the road full-time learn to cut your own hair trust me dudes ladies I don't know I don't know anything about that stuff but trust me dudes if you learn how to cut your own hair you can stay at least groomed when you're out there in the backcountry or out for a long period of time because what I find is that when I let myself go a little bit, don't cut my hair, stop shaving, I don't feel very good inside. That could just be a me thing. Some people may really love that, that, that good old lumberjack feeling. But I myself personally, I prefer, I don't know, when I, when I see myself because I'm on camera all the time. If I didn't have a camera or a mirror, I would probably let it all go. But because I have to see my face every time I turn this camera on, I look at it sometimes going, what's going on with you, bro? <laughs> Does your life falling apart? You look bad. That's me cutting my own hair inside of a van on the side of a road. But 
I need to go somewhere. My van's at a really steep angle right now. I need to go somewhere, open up my doors and blow this whole thing out because that's the problem with doing stuff like this inside of your van is this hair gets everywhere and you'd be cooking tomorrow and you'd be like, ah, oh, man, really? Yeah, I'll be a subscriber. <laughs> I hear that quite a bit. Even when I'm sleeping on the side of the road somewhere and there's no reason for anybody to honk, I hear this beep, 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 boom. Or someone drives by, they're like, beep, beep, weirdo. I absolutely love it. All right. Ah. So much better. Whew. Oh, it was good. I love this little bugger. It has been through so much in my van life journey and it just still keeps on kicking uh this is the smaller explorer 240 and as you can tell it's uh quite quite a small compact little unit one of my favorite batteries the whole lineup because no matter how big of a system you put in your van to power all these like items and stuff i have my you know inverter and i have solar on my roof i still grab for this thing all the damn time. I even have an Explorer 1500, which is the bigger one, um, that runs my heater and stuff at the shop. That thing is pretty damn awesome. Anyway, guys, Jackery's having a sale on right now until January 14th. Get on it quick. I was supposed to announce this a few days ago. Anyway, uh, to January 14th, and they're, let me get this up so I don't get this wrong. They're offering $150 off this solar generator 1000, which is four times bigger than this one. That one could totally run your van. And $250 off the solar generator 1500, which is the one that I have at my shop. Sale ends January 14th. Um, I'll leave the links in the description and in the top comment of this video. Go on over if you've been waiting. Um, anyway, <laughs> that's it for the Jack Responsor. I got a funny story for you. I asked Jackery to send me through another one of these because I've had this one for so long and I've dropped it, banged it, beat it up, and it still keeps working. So in my brain here, I got this thought that I'm like, hmm, I wonder how much more abuse that this battery can take. Can I beat it up? Can I drag it by a rope behind my van? Can I throw it down the stairs? Can I drive over it? I don't know. <laughs> So I would love to make a video showing how much more abuse this thing can take before it breaks. <laughs> can I throw it in a lake? Will it work? Probably not. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I asked Jack, are you send me through another one? Because I thought we would make a video and just beat it up. Hey, you want to go to the back country? Drag me, drag you behind my van? See, even it wants to do it. the very first one here <laughs> I've never I don't think I've ever been the first car at the ferry terminal there's a hose bib on the wall down here at this park if it's on I'm gonna fill up my water jugs nah it's shut off so getting water in the winter is a little bit harder than getting water any other time of the year but there's a lot of public parks and sports fields that have water taps on the side here for all the sports players and stuff. So this is just a little like soccer park uh, here in Vancouver. And uh, normally it's on. Even now it's the tail end of winter. Like I think all last year that tap was on all year round, but we also didn't get much of a winter last year. This year, well, you guys have seen, we actually had winter. Hi. Get the crap out of me, it came around my van, I went, whoa. <laughs> Now that Cruz is on a all raw diet, he actually drinks way less water because the kibble is bone dry. So he was always slurping out of his bowl trying to get some <laughs> trying to get some moisture in him. Uh, now his food is 70 to 80 percent moisture contained in the food itself. So he's drinking less water because he's getting more of it from the food that he's intaking, meaning we go through less water. And these both now last probably twice as long as they used to. 
His bowl now I only keep just a little bit in there. Just in case he does need a drink, I keep a small amount. But before, you know, you'd fill it up halfway, he would slurp it a little bit. It would turn to slime, you'd have to pour it out and then put another one back in there. Or it would just get dirty from dust and stuff being around the home and I'd have to pour it out all the time. Now, it's kind of nice because in the wintertime, gathering water sucks sometimes. Not unless you go to a big box store and you buy the water, which is what I've been doing mostly lately, just because sometimes it's easier and it tastes better. Ugh. Yeah, you can fill up at big box stores like Walmart or out here, Canadian Tire and stuff. They have uh, water fill-up stations and most grocery stores too. What the heck is happening in this video? <laughs> Seriously, we have been filming the last couple of days just random stuff. So anyway, we're back in Vancouver, just going out for a little walk here at Capilano River, and the river is super hot. It's been a while since I've been here. Wow. <laughs> I think the last time I made a video here was probably two years ago and it was raining hard when I was here. So up on this side over there is a fish hatchery. <laughs> All the moss on the trees here on the west coast is pretty damn awesome. I love it. It's like every single tree just says, pet me. Hey buddy, how you doing buddy? <laughs> if I'm tired, Cruz is gonna be just beat. How dirty my van is. I haven't washed it in forever. My bed's made, there's no garbage on the floor. House is looking good, Cruzy. It's looking good. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Are you hungry, you want some lunch? Of course I want lunch, Dad. I recently put hooks over there to hang our leashes at night, but I think I'm gonna actually mount one here. So while we're in and out of the van during the day, I got one right here. Or building some boxes around here, like a little cubby box on the top of both of these. So when we get back from a walk, I can just stick his leashes in the top cubby. That way they're just a quick grab. See? Van upgrades never stop. That's the truth. Because you're always thinking of more, more better. That's what I just about said. Better, more creative ways to make your van better. I think I'm going to do that. Just a couple nice little boxes, maybe with a little pattern on it or something like that. Okay. Maybe I'll get something on there, CNC with like a forest scene or something with a bear on it. I don't know. Hey. Chris is like, all this talking, and I thought you said something about lunch, Dad. You hungry? Are you happy now? This whole entire freezer is all raw food for Cruzy. All of it, right down to the very bottom. <laughs> I guarantee you my freezer now weighs a ton. I don't know what I'm going to do when we get all the way up in the north this year for dog food. Because he's on all the raw. And you can't just go to the butcher shop and grab raw meat and give it to him. It needs to be frozen for one week to three weeks before you give it to it to make sure there's no parasites or anything in there. It just kills off all the crazy stuff that could be lurking in the meat. We cook our meat, so it's a different story. Um, yeah, I never thought about that. I might have to go back to the shop, empty everything out of the freezer inside of the van and see what I can pack in there perfectly for food. You never know, I, I might be able to get a couple weeks worth of food in there. If that's the case, we're awesome. Cause there's a lot of um, big towns up there. Like there's like white horse and things that we can stock up before we head a couple more weeks out into the north. I don't see us being way way off grid for too long because my van has limited gas obviously i don't have an external tank or anything like that i have been thinking about that lately about putting 
um, a few extra gas tanks up top there just those little flat ones and maybe mount them up on the up on the roof or look at a way of mounting it underneath the back of the van these vans come with a spare tire underneath there the spare tire is now gone because this one doesn't fit underneath so i have all that space under the back where the tire would normally fit that i could put an auxiliary gas tank these are things i've been thinking about is it necessary to have a big tank like that probably not is it a good idea yes uh, anyway guys this video has been an eclectic mix and all over the place of me cutting my hair and whatever else. So we're gonna let you guys go. Thanks for watching my madness, even on days when it doesn't make any sense. Peace out, you guys. See you soon. Bye. <laughs> oh, my van life, man, I tell ya. You never know what to do. <sighs>